As summer draws to a close, I headed over to Hongdae to meet with a very special artist. Oh, there he is. Oh, shit. Hey. hey. Hi, Lelse. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You're riding the bike all over Seoul. Yeah, I have, you know, it's my favorite thing. So good. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that you are here. Oh, oh, so let's be careful of the traffic here. Now, this is definitely the eco-friendly way for you to travel around Seoul. It is. Yeah. It is. It's much more fun than subway thing. Definitely. It's not too heavy with your guitar in the back? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, well, thank you for making these uh, sacrifices for coming to our show. So let's go and uh, start uh, heading towards the place where we're going to get definitely. interviewed. Lasse Lind is a Swedish singer-songwriter. With his signature unique voice, he presents music that fuses pop and rock. He began to gain fans in Korea in 2006 when his songs Come On Through and The Stuff was featured on the hit sitcom Soulmate. Lasse Lind fell in love with Korea and actually came to live in the Shincheon Hongdae area for a year, giving performances and writing music and books. He recently came back to Korea for the Penaport Rock Festival. He performed new songs that he worked on with Korean indie singer Yeon Jin, and despite concerns that the two musicians had contrasting styles, the result was a success. Another Lasse song was featured on the recent popular drama, I Need Romance, proving that Koreans were eager to see more of Lasse Lin. Join me, Susan McDonald, as we learn more about his music and life on today's The Interview. So here we are. <laughs> I like it. Cool place, yeah? Awesome. Sure. Oh. Well, have a seat. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Well, I'm so glad that you're here today. <laughs> me too, finally. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, let me just introduce myself and you to the guests uh, that are watching us. Hello, everyone. I'm Susan Lee McDonald, and welcome back to the interview. Today, we have Lasse Linde, a Swedish musician, singer, songwriter, and scriptwriter. He's got many talents, and we're going to find out all about him today. So first of all, what brings you to Korea this time? I know it's the, the Pentarock Festival, yes? Yeah, this time it's been a number of shows and uh, TV things and mm -hmm. magazines and stuff. But yes, that was my main, main thing when I got here, and some recordings. So tell me a little bit about that festival. Uh, just a pretty cool rock festival uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of you know Korean bands, mm -hmm. uh, not that much foreigners. So I guess mm -hmm. I was one of the few, mm -hmm. and that feels always good. I think you know it's more for me. It's more fun to be in a festival with Korean artists than to be in a festival with just well. I love that kind of festivals too. I love mm -hmm. basically I love festivals because when you perform for ordinary concert like mm -hmm. they, they pay to see you they come mm -hmm. they are pretty much your big fans you know mm -hmm. they know the song so it's pretty easy to win them over. you know you have them in your arm you yes know? but when you play the festival mm -hmm. you have much more harder resistance you have to mm -hmm. fight to win them over mm -hmm. and I love that feeling that you have to it, it's a battle You know, you have had a uh, kind of a love affair with Korea, from what I understand, and yes. um, and there are many uh, Korean fans, especially a lot of women, who are just gaga over you. I love and the word <laughs> gaga. That's a cute <laughs> word. <laughs> so, uh, with all these uh, you know women gaga all over you, um, you know, I'd like to know a little bit about why you think it is that you know it. Your music appeals to Koreans and maybe particularly women here. Well, the the women question I think is pretty easy to answer, all because you know it's pretty much a fact that women like guys with pretty high pitched voices, mm -hmm. and while men kind of tend to like darker voices. Mm -hmm. Same thing that you know, girls don't generally are not huge fans of beard and mustaches, right. <laughs> but guys are more like, oh, that's a cool beard, you know, yes. they're kind of in awe of each mm -hmm. other, and. Then, yeah, well, I think for, for Korean, I think 
my voice, you know, it's very different from Korean singing style. Mm -hmm. Korean singing style is very, they're all very good singers here, mm -hmm. I think. They have very strong and, you know, clear voices. Yes. My voice is not that strong and not that clear. It's more, uh, it's very unusual here. Mm -hmm. So I think they, uh, it's unusual everywhere, but it, mm -hmm. especially here, I think. Now, you have uh, recently produced a, uh, an album here, yeah. um, and I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about that. I listened to it yesterday, and I really liked one of the songs. Um, the world keeps spinning around, yeah. <laughs> and it's a very, very catchy tune, but if you could tell me a little bit about how you came to start that album and uh, about your, your co-singer. Well, this song, anyway, this song, The World Keeps Spinning, I wrote this in, in when I lived in Seoul. Huh. When I lived in, uh, so I wrote it like almost two years ago, actually, okay. um, and recorded it here too. Mm -hmm. It's basically a song about big city life. Mm -hmm. Kind of, I think you can never feel as lonely as you can as in a big city. Mm -hmm. That's a big rating feeling too. I, I love, you know, you're an ant, you know, mm -hmm. and that can also be a very uplifting feeling mm -hmm. that you are realize that you are all your problems. It doesn't really matter, you know. In the end, we're all gonna die, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, and that's a kind of encouraging thought, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, if my love life or my, you know, career or anything is goes bad, mm -hmm. who, you know, who cares? Mm -hmm. I will be fine anyway. Yes. So that's the world keeps spinning, you know. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll all be okay in the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you sing with Yeonjin, and I wonder how was that to work together with a Korean singer? Um, I wish we sang more, you know, like in private when we did it, but we mm -hmm. couldn't do it because I had to be in Sweden, so yes. we kind of did it over the internet. Mm -hmm. and yes, you were in Sweden when you yeah. uh, sang and recorded this, yeah. and she was here. Yeah. That must have been quite a challenge to get that. Yeah, recorded. I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and But when I got here, though, when we started singing songs together, mm -hmm. that, that's where the magic happens, you know, uh -huh. when you perform together. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so now I would say the experience was really good, mm -hmm. but that part, sending songs back and forth, not, mm -hmm. not so good, wow. I think. Well, so, so let's get back to you and your, your love affair with Korea. Um, you came first to Korea in 2006, right? Yeah. And that was because your song, uh, Come On Through, was selected by one of Korea's uh, you know, top dramas at the time yeah and uh, you came here for a concert and then you also came back several times afterwards you lived here for a year from yeah. 2009 to 2010 and so you've been here quite often um, why do you keep coming back to Korea well <laughs> for me it's, I mean, it's pretty easy I mean the, I will say the first three times I came here it was just mm -hmm. for shows you know mm -hmm. and I came here stayed like three four five days you know mm -hmm. boom 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 you do this, and then you go mm -hmm. So you spend a lot of time in taxi and cars and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And you know, that's not so fun, you yeah. know. But I really fell in love with Korea when I moved here. And that mm -hmm. was October 2009. And mm -hmm. actually, usually because of my friend here, he's an American, he stayed here many, many years. Mm -hmm. He had a bike and I love biking and he loves biking. So mm -hmm. he said, let's- Like a, like a bicycle. Yeah, like yes, a bicycle, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what you came in on today. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Okay. And I think he knows so better than most people living here, you know, because mm -hmm. he's a very adventurous kind of mm -hmm. guy. So he just started taking me on all those bike rides mm -hmm. in places, weird places and so, and you know, oh. along the river and, you know, mm -hmm. different neighborhoods that just unusual. And then I fell in love like that. Wow. And, you know, uh, it's a very cool city, mm -hmm. I think. It's mm -hmm. very cool. And you have so much stuff. And even a lot of stuff, you know, that Koreans don't seem to know that there is, you know, like mm -hmm. if they just go a little bit, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to stay in your neighborhood. Yes. Like, you're in Ituan, you're in Hongdae, you're, you stay there, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, so a lot of foreigners do tend to just stay in the Itaewon, Gyeongnidan, Hebangchon areas. Yeah, personally, um, I don't, that's not my area at all. <laughs> I go there r r rarely, you know. Mm -hmm. I love old school Korean, like Ulgiro or Mapo mm -hmm. or yeah. Sinchon and Han. Very Jones, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and Hongdae, of course.
so last day in the past uh, number of weeks, you've been busy with the festival, you've been busy with promoting your new mini album, um, and you know, the core of what you do is uh, very creative, yes? You yeah. know, um, you're a creator kind of at heart, a musician and songwriter, singer. Um, I wonder how you became interested in music, and I think a lot of people would like to know that too. Oh my god, well... Uh... I started my first like fake band when I was ten years old. <laughs> fake band. <laughs> well, you know, we mimed kind of thing. Okay. You know? But my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but my real band when I was fifteen, I started my first mm. band. And it's that's very young. Very young. But I basically knew from from the start that I wanted to be a pop star. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you a little funny episode actually. Yeah. It's uh, not this guitar, but my my other guitar is mm -hmm. the guitar my father gave me, and it's. And he gave it to me, apparently, I don't remember this exactly, but I come into the room, I was like angry because I had a band, but I was only the singer. So I didn't like the, the songs they wrote, and I was like, screw this, you know, I can never, you know, fully sing perfectly, I will never be famous, I need to, to write my own songs. Mm -hmm. And I came in and I was like really upset. Mother, I will never learn to play guitar. It's too late now. My, my life is over. And, she's and like, you were 15. Yeah. And she's like, okay. what? Come on, you're 15. Chill. And then my dad came and he said, well, here's the guitar. Mm -hmm. And here's the basic chords. And I still have that note. Oh, wow. So I, that day, I just started to practice. Mm -hmm. And I practiced all, all day, you know. And the same night, I wrote my first song. So I just took them into the room and I played my first song. Oh, and, how cute. And, well, obviously, this song sucked, you know, it's my first song. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, You're oh, not gonna share you know, that song with us today? <laughs> be quiet, you know. No, I don't remember that song, but it, it probably, you know, when people practice, mm -hmm. eh, eh, like, shut up, yeah. you know. But that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, for me, songwriting is, that's the core of my music, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Writing songs. Wow. So if songwriting is the core of what you do, um, how do you how do you get inspired to do songwriting? Mm, well, lyrics is really important to me. That's like mm -hmm. so. Would I have life? You know, mm -hmm. simple as that. You know, there's no faking anything. I think mm -hmm. there's no easy. I mean, of course, if you just want to be like a rich person who writes songs, you can just mm -hmm. you know write songs you don't really like. Mm -hmm. But that it, have mass appeal. Yeah, exactly. And but that's not when I do it. Mm -hmm. So, so my life, my fears, my dreams, mm -hmm. other people's life, just things I just imagine up. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to just. I love being in a place and just look at people and you just mm -hmm. start pick your mind like, mm -hmm. who is he? Who is she? Mm -hmm. who, what's the story? What's the background? You know, and mm -hmm. you make up imaginations. And from that, and from my own life, mm -hmm. I build stories. Tell me about when you first started your music career. You said that you started when you were 15. Yeah. And uh, walk me through the chronology. I know you were signed with Universal and also EMI down the road. Yeah. So, so when did that happen and how did that happen? That's a long story, but uh, okay, I will never be that fast. Okay. Uh, so after high school, I basically realized immediately that this, this is what I should do. Mm -hmm. So I started a band with my best friend mm -hmm. and we needed a bass player and there, there were no bass players mm -hmm. so I said to my dad because he's also you know he's very mm -hmm. he's a di director and stuff so I said why don't you play with us and he did so funny that it you asked funny. your father to be in your band <laughs> and that was he became like a gimmick and that became a thing when when Universal signed us you know because mm -hmm. we made a huge tour and to have a 20 year old kid and a 50 year old dad in the mm -hmm. same band play mm -hmm. indie rock that's kind of a cool thing yeah so after that, and uh, we made like one album, and then I was signed to EMI, and I did solo stuff. Mm -hmm. After that, I left EMI mm -hmm. on my choice and um, took a bit of a break. Mm -hmm. 2001, I recorded an album that later became the reason why I get popular in Korea. That's so right. Like five years Come on later. through. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, I started good movie school, mm -hmm. and I did movie school for four years and made two more albums during that time. Wow. Uh, so that's like four or five albums already. In 2005, I did uh, my first Swedish album in a very long time, and mm -hmm. that became like a hit in Sweden. Yes. So after that, 
I did three albums pretty fast mm -hmm. in three years. But then when I came, 2009, I was really tired of my music. Mm -hmm. I was, I peaked, you know. So mm -hmm. I made like a compilation album in Sweden, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was like the turning point. That was yeah. the end of the, that e era. So then the goal was to start over, basically. And that's what brought you to that's come to Korea. Yes, that's when I come to Korea to get inspiration mm -hmm. and to find a new style of music. Mm -hmm. And and I have done it now, but. I, I found that style, but I st for the ver for different reasons I haven't recorded so many songs. Mm -hmm. A few songs. Uh, with some of the songs, um, and earlier I had asked you about uh, inspiration for for me for why you do music. Um, walk me through uh, maybe one of the songs that you. Um, would like to kind of explain the, the genesis of how a song came about, like how you decided on writing a song that became popular and the story behind a particular song. And maybe you could even sing it for us today. I will do it. Um, well, first of all, you have to, and this is almost always true, mm -hmm. all the really f famous songs, you know, mo most of the really famous songs, mm -hmm are written very very fast mm -hmm. because you know you have like if you if you write too hard on a song mm -hmm. it, you're going to be you lose it mm -hmm. and there's something very direct about a few, a few famous songs mm -hmm. and same from all my really famous songs mm -hmm. has been written super fast and mm -hmm. just like a stroke of genius mm -hmm. so this is my new song here in korea and it's called i could i could give you love mm -hmm. And it's now being on a TV drama, a new drama here uh, mm -hmm. called I Need Romance. Yes. And I wrote that song on Chuseok, mm -hmm. uh, 2010. The, the, uh, Korean Thanksgiving. Yes. yes. And it was like, you know, one of the perfect nights. You know, it was, you know I, I, I live in this huge t building and mm -hmm. I'm pretty high up and I had this huge window mm -hmm. by my room. And it was just thundering and, you know, raining and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And I just picked up my guitar mm -hmm. and I just felt it, you know, this is it. Mm -hmm. And in 20 minutes, the song was finished. Huh. Wow. And that's pretty much how it works when you get like some kind of song. And then oh. it's easy. Usually you have to struggle for a whole day or two mm -hmm. days, you know, mm -hmm. but that's that kind of song. Well, if you would do us the honor of uh, singing that song for us and giving us do. a taste of that, that'd be great. And I know we've got your wonderful acoustic guitar right behind us. We do. <laughs> So Lassie, I hear that this is quite a, an ancient guitar. It is. It's made out of Swedish pine mm -hmm. from 1945. 1945? Yes, end of World War II. So it's a guitar of celebration because it's the end of the war. <laughs> True. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, maybe that's why it's been so nice to me. This yeah. is my, my little baby. Oh, <laughs> it goes with you wherever you go, I bet. Yeah, for sure it goes. Where nice. I go? <laughs> <laughs> so now as a singer-songwriter, I'm just curious, how do you come up with songs? And uh, what is your inspiration for these songs? And, you know, well, usually, <clears throat> usually it's kind of, you know, str not struggle, but I always start with the melody. Mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, you basically instantly know what kind of mood the song is going to be in. Mm -hmm. So I just get some guidelines for myself mm -hmm. what's this, what this song is going to be about. Mm -hmm. And after that I slowly construct a story mm -hmm. like that suits the mood that I feel when I, when I sing the melody. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's usually how it works. Okay. But then sometimes, you know, you just write the song in 30 minutes and boom, it's finished. Wow. And these songs are always the ones that become famous. And that's the mm -hmm. same with, I would say, if you ask almost any artist about mm -hmm. their, you know, number one song. It's mm -hmm. always the song they wrote when they were, they didn't expect to write anything. Oh. When they're in a tour bus or in a hotel mm -hmm. room or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's like a gift from yeah, the you universe know, yes, or something. Yeah, something just happens mm -hmm. for a very short period mm -hmm. and you just, you know, you grab it. Mm -hmm. And you should grab it. Yeah. And so I'm going to play one of the songs that I wrote that is just that kind of style. Okay. Oh, this ship is wrecked The cliffs came so fast I just closed my eyes But you closed your 
arms. I could give you love. I could give you love. I could give you love. If you let me in If you let me in If you let me in Oh, you never Oh my god, I've been in love many times. Uh, I'm in love every day, basically, <laughs> in, in some things. Yeah, well, I, I think no art ever made, any good art anyway, has nev it's never made without love. And so, yeah, huge, huge fan of love. <laughs> and it, it affects me a lot. It affects everything I write, everything I do. But well, getting back to your music, when you're writing these lyrics and it just kind of comes to you as kind of a, a stroke of genius or inspiration. Do you record it? Do you write it down? How do you actually uh, keep a record of it? Because if you lose it, you know, yeah. then it's gone, right? Yeah. Well, I, I both re record it and write it down. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't write notes. I mean, musical notes. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't even write chords. Many of the chords I play, I have no idea what they are. <laughs> So I'm a terrible musician in that way. Mm -hmm. I, many times you have a show and they, especially Korean mu mu musicians are mm -hmm. so trained and you know, they come up and they, she, they show me like notes, like mm -hmm. they want me to say something like, uh, I don't know, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> just play, you know. And that's actually mm -hmm. an interesting thing in Korea, mm -hmm. you know, because when I come here and play, mm -hmm. I have different bands, you know, mm -hmm. different backup musicians. Yes. And they are very different from Swedish musicians. Mm -hmm. How are they different? Because, you know, they always look at the notes and they're mm -hmm. like really, you know, like, they are so serious. Mm -hmm. So I just try to make them, uh, I mean, it's good. They're, they're super talented, mm -hmm. but they are, they are too good, mm -hmm. you know. And I want to take that away. I want mm -hmm. them to be less perfect. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's when it happens. Yes. Okay? That's, if, if you listen to a band, you know, there's, it's, it's not about if they make any mistakes, mm -hmm. it's about how much passion they play with it. Yes. So I always try to bring that out from them. Mm -hmm. you know, stop looking at the note, just be <laughs> there, you know. I imagine that it's that passion that your, um, your listeners really hear and feel from your voice and from Hope your so. music. Yeah. And I think maybe that's why your music has been selected for a lot of Korean um, popular dramas uh, soundtracks. You know, Koreans call this uh, these soundtracks OSTs, but yeah. you know, in English it's actually soundtrack. But it's, yeah. it's selected as a soundtrack because it has to be emotional and yeah. kind of bring about some type of feeling. Um, what did it feel like for you when you were when your song was first selected for uh, the Korean drama in 2006? Well, honestly, first I didn't feel anything because you know many times you have my songs because my songs are kind of you know like moody and kind of almost like movies mm -hmm. i think so it, but most of the times you, when you have a song selected for a tv show or a commercial or something you know it, it fails you know like it's ba it's a bad show or it's a bad com <laughs> you know you have no idea yeah. you know? <laughs> the product doesn't sell or something. yeah exactly but this time it, it was a really good drama mm -hmm. and a really unique drama and kind of became like a cult drama yes and they used my song in a very, I think, pretty genius way. They used it like a love song mm -hmm. for 
like these couple never meeting each other. Mm. So it became like a love theme for many Korean girls, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. and guys too, I guess, but for, you know, their soulmate, mm -hmm. the love they can't get, but mm -hmm. in the end they will get. Yeah, like so, that unrequited love. Exactly. Yeah. So this song gave them, you know, hope and sadness and, you mm -hmm. know, I got so many cute emails like, oh, listen to your songs when it's raining. I listen to your songs when I'm sad. You know, like, it's, like, mm -hmm. it's so nice. You're yeah. so cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would love for you to uh, sing us that song that, that really brought you here to Korea. Uh, come on through. Uh, would you? I will try. You, you? It's, it's actually written, I wrote it on guitar. Mm -hmm. But this is also a song that I've sung really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing here. It just happened. Boom. Mm -hmm. But I wrote it on guitar, and then my producer, because I produced it with a guy, we produced mm -hmm. it together. We were just playing around, and he said, like, but why, why not do it on piano? Mm -hmm. hmm. And then we did it, and that's when we come up with this kind of theme for the whole song. Yes. I mm -hmm. So I will try to do it on guitar. Okay, great. We'll bring over the mic real yeah. quick. back to the theme of you being a storyteller and yeah. uh, song being one of the, the medium where you can actually uh, tell that story. You like to tell stories through your writing too. So yeah. uh, whether it's a screenplay, um, also you said that um, you also wrote a book, The uh, Hello yeah. Soul. Please tell me a little bit about how um, that's, that book came about because that was specifically for a Korean audience, yes? You mean Hello Soul? Yes. Actually, it's called Hello Soul. Hello Soul. <laughs> so that's like the Swedish version of Hello. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hello. Yeah, yeah, hello. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I got contacted by uh, a few publishing labels. They want a publishing, what do you call it? Book, book labels. Publishing or companies? Yeah, mm -hmm. they wanted me to write basically a biography. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said no, because, you know, I think when you're 80, maybe you can write a biography. <laughs> But then I thought about it more and realized that why not? You know, mm -hmm. I love Korea, so why mm -hmm. not make it not a biography, but instead kind of a Seinfeld take on mm -hmm. Korean, yes. Korea and Koreans, mm -hmm. my experience here. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, and during my time here, I had already taken many notes of funny things mm -hmm. I like here. Yes. So I just, you know, started doing that even more, mm -hmm. and it became a book that apparently is very funny for Koreans to yes. read. And uh, it's about how my life here and, and how I, th my view on Korean mm -hmm. people and you know, all the crazy things they do. And, I had a chance uh, to receive your book uh, only yesterday, but I did yeah. kind of flip through it and I saw <laughs> a couple of really kind of cute stories and funny stories. Um, I know I have a couple of favorites from what I saw last night. I'm just curious, what are some of your favorite stories from, from Hello Soul? Um. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many. It's like, uh, 
I do love my first trip to Jinjilbang. That was pretty ah, yes. insane here. And the Jinjilbang, uh, for those uh, audience members who don't know what that is, it's kind of like a, uh, a warm, heated room that's kind of attached to a sauna yeah. and uh, you just are there to sweat out yeah. you know, the toxins in your body and it's usually co-ed. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And for me, it's the... I like the sauna part more mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just... You know, you have all the small towels, and you have, you have no idea how to behave. You know, mm -hmm. and they look at you like, what? You know, <laughs> you know, the all the adjumas and haraguchis and stuff. It was yeah, it was amazing, it really fun. And um, well, I think one story that Koreans like a lot, and is also about my view on they use umbrellas here a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, and in Europe and in Sweden especially. I mean, I never had an umbrella in my entire life. It doesn't really? matter. If, no, it doesn't matter if it rains. You know, you maybe you pick one up if it rains really hard. But mm -hmm. you know, it's just water. You know, <laughs> who cares? You know, it's going to be fine. But in, in Korea, it's like if one drop comes, they freak out. They start running. You know, like oh my God, it's raining. <laughs> and uh, everybody tells me like, oh, you have to take umbrella because otherwise you're going to get bald. And you know. Oh yes. And it's so cute. It's so funny because to me that's absolutely bizarre but in a very mm -hmm. cute way yeah well the whole thing about the the bald thing is that they I, believe that it's acid I rain, know right? I know I, I know <laughs> it's toxic I know it's toxic but still you have to have like you know basically stand in showers of toxic for like hours of hours yes. so you know it's not that toxic though yeah I mean, it, so it's very it's very funny for I think for mm -hmm. foreigners it's very funny like what is this you know exactly and Korea's acid rain is actually not a serious problem at all like it's kind of urban myth well you know it's like lines. every country has all those small things you know and since I do love Korea so much you kind of embrace all mm -hmm. those things and make mm -hmm. them because it's, it's just different styles here in, sure. in many ways sure. What has been some of the um, things that have really endeared you to being in Korea? You mean made me want to stay here? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I'm a big fan of the food here, mm. and I'm. But I would say more the food culture, the food and drinking culture, the mm -hmm. nightlife culture. It's mm -hmm. very cheap here, mm -hmm. and the meal is an important thing mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yet you go out together, you have drinks, and mm -hmm. you you know eat together. Mm -hmm. It's very inspiring. It's very social here. It's in very Korea. social. Yeah, I love that. And, it's social uh, and relaxed. Yes. And I'm curious, have you um, any favorite Korean foods? It it goes up and down. So, Samgyetang used to be like one of my big favorites. Uh, yes. Still good, but it's like the big chicken soup with the actual chicken still inside. Yes. Yeah. I'm very. Yeah, it's good. It just, it just feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. But if you eat that too much, you get a little bit bored at it. Mm -hmm. Summertime, nemyeong is like, I mm -hmm. like that a lot. And the cold noodle soup. Yeah, yeah cold noodle mm -hmm. soup. But uh, I would say it's still the most social thing is any kind of kalbi, mm -hmm. like Korean barbecue. Yes, yes. And, that's, and I think more, most foreigners appreciate that a lot because mm -hmm. everybody loves meat, you know. Mm -hmm. My personal favorite, however, is grilled fish mm -hmm. if, if, if you get it on right places like yes. in Jeju or mm -hmm. like that. Now you've been to Jeju uh, Island lot. several times. Yeah, I love it. Um, what is it that attracts you to Jeju Island? Because I know that there are many foreigners, uh, many non-Koreans who are traveling all o over the world to come here uh, yeah. to Jeju. So um, what do you think is the appeal? Well, first of all, it's much greener than uh, the rest of Korea, I would mm -hmm. say. And that's very appealing. Mm -hmm. It's just a feeling. It's very slow mo. Everything is like slow motion, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. the food is great, mm -hmm. really good. And mm -hmm. I had a really good experience from from Jeju people. Mm -hmm. They're really very kind, I think. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's more about the feeling than the actual mm -hmm. beauty of the mm -hmm. island. Mm -hmm. To be honest, the yeah. volcano obviously is cool. If for some reason I couldn't work with music, I would work with cooking. I would like to be, be a chef. Um, that's my other real passion: is cooking and you know, being in the kitchen and just creating stuff. Pretty much like music, I think. Uh, I never cook the same dish twice. I love to you know, be fresh and you know just improvise. So that's a huge passion of mine: cooking. Do you ever feel like there are times where you've just really just fallen flat on your face? Um, and oh my God, and course, yeah. how did you recover from those times? Can you give us an example? Uh, 
Well, that's the thing. I kind of like those feelings. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's kind of love too. And like, it doesn't matter to me. Do you me. like the feeling of failing? No, not failing. But I like the feeling of uh, doing something that I'm not. That's why, like, if I have a concert, mm-hmm. I practice very, very little. Mm-hmm. I like being on stage and almost have no idea what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Wow. Because that gives you the edge. Like, mm, you have to stay sharp. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be there in the moment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I love that. And yeah. that, so I don't care if I'm falling because, mm-hmm. like Batman, you have to fall to rise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pretty much. It's, mm-hmm. how, it's how it works. And that's mm-hmm. how I work as a mm-hmm. person. And um, I mean, it sounds like you're very much uh, an adventurous person, but also yeah, yeah. like very risk taking because that's really risky. Like you've got, you know, several hundred, possibly thousands of people there for your concert with very little preparation. I mean, I, yeah, I'm sure no. you know the song. Yeah, right? but, but n- not always. It's like, yeah, I, I love that risk taking. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was really wild kid when I was a teenager. I did a lot of crazy stuff. You know, I it just I don't want going to but I was I was pretty wild and it, well, it, like give us an example of what well you know I did things early on that I shouldn't been doing I made a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. I I traveled a lot alone when I was too young you know I got mm-hmm. robbed I got into bad accidents and bad you know bad things happen mm-hmm. but why not mm-hmm. and when I tell those stories to Korean people they're like oh, oh my god you know you're too young or why did you do that mm-hmm. and but, well I did it because you know it was I was always, my sister is like the perfect sister. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, don't, maybe she will hate me because I'm saying that now, but she's amazing. I love her. Mm-hmm. But she's like, she's always like the good one, and I was mm-hmm. always the bad one, you know. My mother. <laughs> the black sheep of the family? Sort well, of? you know, my mother was always worried about me, never mm-hmm. worried about her, because mm-hmm. I was always in trouble. I was mm-hmm. always had no money. I was always, you know, running around or going away on trips, you know, like, mm-hmm. and then they couldn't stop me, you know. Yeah. So that's basically how I feel about mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like you're definitely a free spirit. And I, yeah, I'm very free without spirit. Without being a free spirit, and it's hard to be as creative as yes. you are to do the music that you're doing and yeah. the screenplays. I like losing control. That's I always been my greatest fear mm-hmm. and also my greatest passion. Mm-hmm. All my scripts, all my it comes back to that feeling when you lose control of mm-hmm. yourself. That's really interesting that you say that because after a concert or after a performance, a lot of artists say that there's a feeling of just real emptiness, like yeah. a void afterwards. It's like they've given the maximum energy that they possibly can, and then they're left with like nothing. And it's so easy for a lot of artists to, you know, really go into a downward spiral. Drugs, you know, lots of just yeah. things that aren't good for them. How do you deal with something like that? And do you experience that yourself? Yeah, I, there's actually one chapter about that in the book. Mm-hmm. And it's very true. After a concert, you are, on the stage, if you have a good concert, you are kind of feeling like you're a god. Mm-hmm. It sounds ridiculous, mm-hmm. but you feel really mm-hmm. powerful. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, when you're in the you know, dressing room, you are like completely alone. Mm-hmm. You feel like you are alone. Mm-hmm. Especially of the singer, you are like, mm-hmm. um, you have two options after concert. E- either you go home and you just be sad, mm-hmm. or you just bounce back at mm-hmm. it because after show I always do like autograph sessions mm-hmm. that's been like kind of my motive to do that mm-hmm. in my entire life so after that I'm completely round out you know mm-hmm. then you just have to smile for one hour too mm-hmm. like and I, I love my fans so mm-hmm. I, I I'm happy to do it mm-hmm. but it's it really takes energy off you because mm-hmm. you are but it's totally worth it mm-hmm. but after mm-hmm. that I need to party immediately because mm-hmm. otherwise I'm dead you know and you also yeah. you have no energy you mm-hmm. sweat like tons and you know, when you're yeah, on stage. You need lots of uh, replenishment and fluids. Lots of sodium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of your fans, um, you do have quite a, a high number of fans that are women. Yeah. And um, I. Is, is that hard to understand? <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hmm. <laughs> You know, and it's and it's not a surprise. Um, and I wonder, what are some of the craziest stories of uh, some female fans that you've had here in Korea? Well, female fans in Korea, they are very polite and very. I have no real crazy story, but you know, they're more like they are. They come up and they hug you and they shake. They're so nervous, you know. Oh. And that's amazing. So they're so, so be- nervous or shaking. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm some, and that's a beautiful feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you should not take that lightly. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I should respect that and, mm-hmm. you know, feel very proud of myself. Mm-hmm. So, uh, 
I have only good things to say about Korean fans, mm -hmm. actually. When you're giving a performance here in Korea, um, I hear from a lot of different people who, who perform that the crowds here are fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. How could you describe a Korean audience as opposed to a Western audience? Korean audience is very uh, much listening all the time. Mm -hmm. You can, I made shows here with my guitar one and a half hour, you mm -hmm. know, and that's really hard to do mm -hmm. unless you have a perfect crowd. Yes. If you sing one and a half hour with mm -hmm. one guitar, you need them to be right there, mm -hmm. and they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, once again, I have only good things to say about Korean fans. Fantastic. Well, Lasse, it's been such a pleasure talking to you, and I know that you have uh, quite the uh, experience of living in Seoul and living in the Hyundai area and I know you've got another schedule uh, that's an interview so um, how about we walk through Hyundai and you can kind of show me around a little bit before we get to your interview great okay cool okay, great Two most important people. I mean, it's uh, it's silly to say you're my mom and dad, but they, it, it has to be my mom and dad. You know, they're like my foundation of you know stability. They never ever stopped. They never doubted me at all. They always supported me when I was a kid. Never even once said, "Oh, cut your hair and get a job." You know, it will always like, yeah, be be pop star, be this. You know, do that. So, and I feel very comfortable near them, and with my sister, of course, too. But. So here we are in uh, Hongdae, um, the famous place where all the kids come to listen to all kinds of music. And you're familiar with this area, yes? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Koreans love singing and entertaining, and I know that's probably why you're such a hit here. But there are so many karaoke's, like uh, in. Um, Korea, they call it Norebang. Yeah. Have you ever been to one? Do many times. Many times? <laughs> Almost every, not every time I grow up, but a, a lot of times they want me to go in there and, you know, <laughs> sing. And, you know, we all, it's, you know, it's fun, you drink and you sing and stuff. Yeah. But they always want me to sing my song, because it's always in there. That's right, your come song on, art, come your through. songs are in the book, so. Yeah, but <laughs> I always screw up, you know, because you, you, you have so much pressure, you mm -hmm. have to sing perfectly. Do you ever get uh, less than a perfect score singing Dude, your own song? Oh, every time. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, one time I was pretty so do you thinking. Mm -hmm. I got like 70 points. Oh, 70. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, it's, it's always fun. You know, it's, uh, it's a great, yeah, I love it. And yeah. in Sweden, it's very different. Uh, karaoke means that you are singing like for like many, many people. Mm -hmm. Here you are in a small room. Yeah. I like this much more. I really prefer, it's much more intimate and it's okay to make a mistake, but you're with friends. And exactly, exactly. So, that, it doesn't matter what score yeah. you get. And then you go eat yeah. and you go back and sing or you go ring. I love how you go from, you know, different restaurants for the whole night, you know. You, yeah. You, yeah. They call it the yu chai. Exactly. Yu chai yeah, I love first, that. Yeah. Second and third places to go and have I fun. love the fourth place, you know. The fourth place. Like, oh. uh, <laughs> but then it's like, what, 6 a.m. in the morning, yeah, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> then you go to after club. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, you know, I know that we're on your on our way to go uh, for another interview for you. Yeah. I mean, you're such a popular guy. From one interview to the next. Whoa. Um, and uh, I think that there might be a couple things uh, along the way that um, you said that you wanted to kind of talk about. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit more into the more quiet area of Hongdae. That's I like more, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's some nice coffee shops and tea places for me, though. I don't drink coffee. Wonderful. <laughs> Great, well, um, we are on our way and let's go find some tea. <laughs> yeah. Ladies first, right? Oh, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, what a cute little cafe. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. I like oh, it. Nice. Oh, I can see why you like to come here. <laughs> so, where oh, are they? There you are. Oh, so you're here for your interview, yes? Yes, for oh, my interview. Great. Hey. <laughs> Let's hear some more from Yeonjin, the Korean indie singer who collaborated with Lasse. Yeah. 
두분다한 말씀씩 다 해주시면 감사하겠습니다. I'd like to know um, how you two decided to collaborate, and if uh, both of you, each of you, can say a little something about it. You go first. <laughs> 어, 처음에는 저는 원래 알고 있었고 라스린디 씨를 음, 워낙 그 신촌에서 자취하신다고 유명하시잖아요. 네, 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 네. 전 지금까지 살고 계시는 줄 알았어요. 아 근데 들은 얘기에 의하면 요즘 왔다 갔다 하시면서 네, 네. 작업하시는데 네. 콜라보레이션 같은 걸 해보고 싶어 하셨다고 전부터. 그래서 I can say, um, uh, well, I was attracted to her voice, very uh, different style, I think. Mm, since I have a pretty different voice too, I think it, yeah, a good match. Music really is a language that is spoken all over the world. The two musicians were able to come together despite their different styles. What did Yunjin think about working with Lasse? IT 기술이나 그런 거에 기대지 않는 올가닉한 뮤지션이고 네. 이기용 뮤지션 네. 네. 그 앞으로의 행보가 되게 기대되고 네. 한국에 언제 오실지 모른다고 네. 하셨는데 자주 오셨으면 좋겠어요 아이고 좋은 말씀 해주셨어요 네 감사합니다 진짜 네. Thank you so much Thank you 네. Thank you so much, yeah. Lasse. Hey. It was great to meet Let's you. Hug it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was great to meet you and Absolutely. spend time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> get stay know. in touch with her uh, and, uh, and let me know when it's finished Definitely. and everything. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah so we'll it. be in touch for sure. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> great, all right. <laughs> Don't you know? 